ears and fingers. You gotta get these two things talking to each other and you gotta develop that link between them. And in this lesson, I'm gonna show you an easy exercise that you can use any time of the year to really get that link strengthened. It's gonna help you to be a much better improviser. <laughs> Actually, I've been putting out the Christmas decorations. I'm filming this on the 1st of December. It's Christmas time, right? But it gave me a really good idea about an exercise that you can use to develop that, that link between your ears and your fingers. And uh, I like doing this at Christmas time, but you could do this at any time of year. I'll explain why. The reason we need to get that link between our ears and our fingers working and strong is so that whatever we hear in our head, we can play on our saxophone. Because I would reckon that pretty much all of us you, yeah, even you, are able to sing the sort of solo that you'd like to play. You can hear it in your head, right? It doesn't matter whether it's a pop tune or a reggae tune or a jazz standard. You could probably hear the sort of lines that you'd like your saxophone to be able to play. The trick then is getting it from here onto your saxophone. And that's why that link between your ears and your fingers is so important. I like Christmas songs. I like Christmas carols. I like cheesy Christmas songs. I just like them. They're great. They make me feel happy and uh, fun and remind you of being a kid, right? But the cool thing about Christmas songs is that we all know them really, really well. So I'm going to pick a Christmas song that uh, I happen to be thinking about this morning and show you how I work on this exercise. So do you hear what I hear? Let's just look at the first part of the melody. So it sounds like this. <laughs> Okay, you know that one? So the way this exercise works is we're going to take a melody, in this case I'm going to take that melody, and we're going to deconstruct it and then transfer it over lots of different keys. And actually it's much easier than you, than you think. Now you've probably heard jazz guys say to you, you've got to learn everything in every key. Now it sounds like a completely daunting task, right? Huge task. It's not. It's easy once you get a system. Okay, so let's look at this tune. Now the first step is to work out what the key uh, is for this particular tune. Now I'm starting on a G. And I can hear that it's in the key of G. It starts on a G, it ends on a G at the end of the song, and it uses all the notes of a G major scale. So G to G with an F sharp. Okay, so I know this is in the key of G, and now what I need to do is look at the notes in the melody and work out what degrees of the G major scale these notes are. So it starts on a G. And in my key it goes G, A, B, so it's the first note, the second note, the third note. So we're going G, A, B, 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 A, A, B. And then the last bit goes... So it starts on the G, goes up to the D, which is a G, A, B, C, D. It's the fifth degree of the scale, right? G, 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 and G, G, D, D. And then up to the G again, which is the one. So one, one, five, five, one, one. And then back down to the five. Okay, so we've got a bit of a map now of how that melody works in relation to the scale. That was pretty easy, right? So once you've got that map, you can then transfer it into a new key. Use that map to work out the melody in the new key. So we were in the key of G, let's pick another key. How about D? That's a fair way away. So a D major scale. If you know your D major scale, it's from D to D with an F sharp and a C sharp. Okay, so remember we went one, two, three, 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 two, two, three. So if we transfer that to the key of D major, the first note was a one, which is a D, and then we have the two, the second note, which would be an E in the scale of D major. So D, E, and then F sharp is the third. So now, if I transfer that pattern over, so. One, two, three, 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 two, two, three. And remember the second half of it went one, one, five, five, one up the top and back down to the five. So in our new key, it'd be one is D, five is D, E, F, G, A. So D, D, A, A, 
and then the 1 again at the top, which is the D, of course, and then back to the 5, which is the A. So if you put it all together, Let's try one more key. Let's try B flat major. So B flat major starts on a B flat, goes to B flat, it's also got an E flat in it. So remember it was one, two, three, 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 two, two, three. So in the key of B flat, it'd be B flat is one, C is two, D is three. So B flat, C, D, 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 C, C, D. And then one, one, five, five, one, five. B flat is one. So B flat, C, D, E flat, F is five. F is five, so it's B flat, B, B flat, B flat, F, F, B flat, F. simple system isn't it but you know that system will help you whether you're learning a Christmas song in every key or whether you're learning giant steps in every key it's exactly the same process it doesn't matter how complicated the melody is it just means that your map is going to get a little bit more complicated so here's a challenge for you this Christmas season why don't you pick a Christmas song each week that you like it could be Silent Night it could be Deck the Halls of Bowels of Holly whatever it is pick a tune and then make up that map you can write it down if you want or you can do it in your head and then try transferring that map to different keys so that you can play that tune in as many different keys as you can. And if you're doing this all the time, I guarantee it's going to make that link between your ears and your fingers so much better. In fact, I'll bet that you'll find at the start, the first one takes a little bit of time, but the more you do it, the easier it's going to get. And before you know it, you'll be able to do it super fast. It might take you a few minutes to get that first one done, but once you've done it two or three times, I'll bet that you'll find that you can move into different keys so fast you won't even need to go through this process, it'll just happen automatically. And at that point, it's really going to help you with your improvising because you've got, a, you've got a really strong bond between your ears and your fingers and then you'll be able to play whatever you want. So, I hope this exercise has been useful to you. If you want to check out more Christmas lessons and also hundreds of other lessons on technique, altissimo, overtones, uh, improvising, all sorts of things, check out the Lessons Inside Sax School. You can get started with a 30-day free membership at the moment. And also, if it's your first time on this channel, please do click subscribe because I'm putting new videos out all the time like this and I really want to help you to get better at saxophone and hopefully have a bit of fun along the way as well. So keep practicing hard. Have a great Christmas. I'll catch you soon.